evening. This open meeting of the Men and Select Board is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 24th, 2020. Due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth, due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's orders suspend the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible location, physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. For this meeting, the Men and Select Board is conveying by convening by telephone conference as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Okay, Mark. Okay. So just to cover some ground rules, how we'll conduct business. Um, the chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any responses, please wait until I yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage each other, please do so through me taking care to identify yourself. Um, the chair will ask members of the public wish to speak to identify themselves and, and addresses only. Once the chair has a list of public commentators, I will call each of you by name. Uh, each vote taken this evening will be conducted by a roll call vote. Okay, first item on the agenda. This is not fun. Citizen statements and petitions? Yeah, no, yes. <laughs> Any citizen statements or petitions? Nope. Correspondence. Don't None. think we have no. any. Nope. Uh, consider meeting minutes. I actually haven't read them. You guys read them yet? I read them. Did you have any issues with them? I personally did not have any issues with them. All right. Well, actually, Let's move it just to next week because I want to take a look at a couple of them. Or next meeting. John, new police station building up. Yeah, Don Warren, 36 Press Street Drive. Thank you for having me. Um, hopefully, this is one of the final updates. Uh, just to get you up to speed. Um, I just asked Chris if he's been inside. Have you been inside, Mark? Have you had an opportunity to tour the inside? I have, yes. Okay, Looks good. Great. So you they can were see still it. doing a little bit of work, but um, I'm sure by now it's, it's probably done. Yeah, we still have a punch list. So let me just give you guys an update of where we are and what we have left. Um, so we met last night. Um, we formally approved and signed the certificate of substantial completion. So Chairman Cronin signed that last night. Um, building inspector is in the process of issuing a temporary certificate of occupancy. Uh, there's a bunch of punch list items and there are two major items that are preventing a full certificate of occupancy. One, we have some issues with condensation in the HVA system, HVAC system. So they need to come out. Um, it's not programmed right. They need to come back in and reprogram the makeup air, there's too much outside air coming in. That's actually 100% right now. So it's bringing in all this humidity and it's not being able to keep up. So they're supposed to come in either tomorrow or Thursday and reprogram all that just to make sure that the HVAC system is, is running properly. And the second item is we still have little water pressure in the building and 
uh, we're not sure how much of it is due to the town well versus the design of the new station. So we don't want to issue a full certificate until we're comfortable that there's no design issues with the new building. So I'm sure you're up to speed on the town well. If not, Dan Byers online, they tried to repair it last Friday. Uh, you guys are up to speed on all that, or Dan, do you want Dan? Do you want Dan just to give a quick update, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, I think that'd be good. I know I did read through those emails, but it would be good to update the public as well. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, oh, hang on. There's going to be an echo. Give me a second. Um, yeah, so they came out on Friday and attempted to pull the well pump. Unfortunately, they were not successful. Um, I believe they broke a steel cable trying to move it. They then switched to a one-ton like engine hoist and maxed it out. Um, and so the conclusion is that they don't think the pump can be removed. Um, it's either stuck in or there's something wrong. Um, so the next step, they had a backup plan to insert a smaller well pump. Apparently they can feed it down next to the existing pipe and ideally get it all the way down right on top of the existing pump. So that was their backup plan. If they broke something, um, we're now hoping that maybe that will be the solution that provides the water we need. I think pretty much any new well pump is going to be better than what's down there right now. Um, and then obviously the third option would be drilling a new well, but that's not something that can happen right away for sure. So you're waiting for a proposal on that, right? Yeah, the last, when they left on Friday, he said he was sending, he was going to send back the specs on the replacement well pump and all that, so then you guys can forward to the engineers and make sure that they're okay with it. Um, I, I guess I'll check in now. It's Tuesday. I haven't heard anything yet. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Don. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Um, so those are the two issues that are essentially holding up a permanent certificate of occupancy. So um, Tim Icardi is going to issue a 30-day temporary CFO, and then we'll monitor it and see if we can get the, uh, hopefully the HVAC gets fixed later this week. And then depending on what happens with the well, uh, we'll make sure we have water pressure in the building. Pending those two, we'll issue a full certificate of occupancy, and essentially, um, building will be turned over and could be moved in, um, depending on what, you know, what the police department decides to do. There is one other major issue that's not really holding up the certificate of occupancy, and that's the landscaping. Landscaping has not gone very well. I don't know if you've been around the, the campus, but none of the grass—it's all crab grass. The grass looks, hasn't come in. Oh, I'm sorry. Looks really not good at all. No, it's it's terrible. So the landscaper pretty much didn't keep up with the watering, didn't do a very good job. So they're going to come back and redo it all, probably end of August into September and try to have it take through the fall. By spec, they have to, it has to go through an entire winter and it has to go through five mowings in the spring. So that, that will not get, that wasn't going to get accepted anyway until the spring. So we have time to recover. Um, but that, that, again, it just, it's unfortunate. It just doesn't look very good right now. And, you know, um, I mean, we haven't had a lot of rain to help with that situation. So. Right. And the, they didn't want to tax the well, um, and they could only bring in so much water at a time. So it was, it was a typical situation. But they own it. They know it. They're aware of it. And that will remain open until sometime in the spring. Don, I, I have a question about that, too. Um, the location of the walkway on the town hall side doesn't really seem to be conducive to actually using the building, the placement of it. So before they go and they, um, we actually had someone come out and fix the concrete on that, on the town section last week on the ramp. And it seems to me that we should consider potentially moving that or pouring another one and then maybe planting around that. I'm not quite sure what the thought was on the design of the look. I know it's a little late, but if we are planning on using the ramp for the long term as the main one of the main so that it, we really even today people are cutting across right through that space, that green space to get up the ramp. And so I think we probably should address it now since we're gonna be fixing things. Just absolutely okay. 
So you you said you've repaired the concrete at the base? We did. We we poured the concrete um, up and connected to the sidewalk where you are up to the building, nothing up the ramp. Um, and I didn't want to propose pouring another section without sort of figuring out what was going on with the landscape section first. Um, I'm not opposed, you know, to finding some, so we have to find a, a, a walkway solution there. I don't know what it is, but we can talk about it. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll capture an action to follow up with you, Kim. Yeah, no sense in them planting grass if we want to just put a walkway through it. So, okay. Right. All right, let me capture that. Thank you. Okay, um, the only other items that need some attention is um, there is that temporary berm at the back of the lot. Again, this the the pavement is not complete. When you, if it's just a reminder, there are two alternates that are remaining that will turn back over to the town that we have funding for, but they would not award it to the contractor. One is the abatement and demo of the existing police station, which can't happen for a little while because we have dispatch in there. And then the top coat of the parking lot. Because we don't have the full lot paved, there's a berm at the back between the town hall and the existing police station. That's to prevent all the water from running off and going you know, back behind the uh, between the hall and, this, and the police station going all the way back to the back of the lot. I think you need to give some consideration to how you want to handle parking when you open town hall and open the building department. Um, that's obviously typically people drive in there and then go around. Do you want, pe I don't know if you want people driving over that berm, it's going to get destroyed. Um, obviously it's going to have some issues with plowing in the winter. So I just think there needs to be some discussion about uh, egress in and out. Um, maybe you have some e entrance on the other side for handicap access to the building department. I, I just think, you, I don't know if that's Kim or whatever. I think there needs to be some discussion. When you're ready to open the buildings, people aren't going to realize that berm was never there before and they're going to just drive right over it. Um, so just food for thought. I don't know where you want to take that, but uh, I'd recommend some signage go up near that berm. So if there's individuals that aren't used to it and aren't paying attention, they don't wreck their car. And we have liability on the town. So maybe Alan can put some signage up there mm -hmm. that uh, warns folks of the berm. Or even just a few cones there just to highlight that you don't drive through it. Yeah. Uh, I, this is I, Chief Crazy, real quick, Don. Um, so, so the berm over there, what I'm thinking of doing is, um, we could use them many ways in the department and we, I was going to take it on my budget to get those, um, those kind of big sawhorse type of things that can fill up with water. So I was going to get four or five of those because those are useful when we close down roads and stuff like that, you know, when they're empty, but we can fill them up with water and they'll be heavy so they can't be moved. And I was thinking of just basically sectioning it off so you really can't miss it and you can't drive around it or over it. Okay. Uh, and then does that makes sense. Yep. And the only uh, the only comment would be um, handicap accessibility for people that need to go to the building department. Um, typically, they would drive in that side and go around because the other one was a one way out. The other one probably needs to be a two way, which is not very safe. So it just needs to be some consideration for entering and exiting on the north side, you know, between the town hall and the building department. Um, at least, I don't know, maybe we can put some signage or something uh, handicap only or maybe employees only and hand, I don't know something right. I think I think we will Don. I think that section um, along the building now for the building department will be no parking for staff at all. We're trying to park all towards the back. Um, and I think, you know, we're going to use utilize signage and basically temporary barriers as much as we can until the final design is done for the back of the lot and the building, which is probably, you know, six months out. Right. So um, but I do think already having everyone park in the back of the lot has been really helpful just for the flow. OK, so I'll make sure we close on that one. Um, the other one was, um, I had mentioned uh, last time I was here, just generally when you had your COVID-19 reimbursement discussion, um, there were a couple of things that we had that we thought could qualify. We have a couple of months of uh, owner's project manager for $6,000. We have the builder's risk insurance, which 
we had paid for four months. We'll probably get about a month and a half credit back now because we're issuing the certificate of occupancy this month. That that insurance went through the uh, third week of September. So we'll get some of it back, but that was $4,600. It'll probably be another few thousand. And then last time I was here, we had that huge uh, request from the general contractor. We've actually vetted that back and forth, and uh, we don't believe that the contractor is really entitled to most of it. So it's going to be less than $1,000. So all told, I think it'll be like $10,000 ish of COVID-19 reimbursement type stuff. And I can work that with Kim and maybe at a future meeting. I don't, again, I know you've allocated most of it already. But we might want to have some discussion of whether we want to use any of it to get some of that back for the for the at least for the police station project so we can go towards the last two alternates. OK, questions on that. All right. Um, next one is there is a temporary generator that's supporting the old police station. The new generator supports the new station in the town hall well um, in the septic system so that when the old police station gets demoed, the generator will support everything that the old generator used to support. Um, because you're keeping dispatch up and running, we have a temporary generator that's been there for the project. Uh, Chief Kersey has worked out an extension of the lease to, to continue. So as of July 1st, the town has assumed that lease for that generator. It's just $650 a month. So I know Chief Kersey is handling that but it's just another expense that was unplanned originally that I just want to make you to be aware of. Uh, lastly, uh, from a budget standpoint, uh, we do have, as of today, around $128,000 left that was allocated for the alternates that we hope to turn over most of it to the town. There's a couple of, there's one more change order pending with you know a few items in it, but we hope to turn that back over to the town so the town can use it for the abatement and demo of the existing station and then the paving of the lot and the you know the entire town hall campus plan which i assume will be sometime in 2021 and i guess at this point the committee will probably disband as a full committee um, we expect to have all of our invoices and all of our payments we still have the last um, hold back from the general contractor because they still have plenty of stuff on the punch list. But we really don't have to meet regularly, probably after the end of this month. Um, so we'll probably, I'll, you know, we'll have to stay engaged, obviously, because we have punch list items that will carry into the spring. But formally, we'll have to turn most of this over to the town and Kim. And we'll figure out a transition on how to move forward and make sure that um, the town hall the whole campus plan is executed with these funds. And then at some point, it's probably premature now, but we do have the old memorial for Police Chief Matthew Mantoni in storage. Uh, Chief Kersey is planning to bring that out at some point and maybe do some kind of dedication. We'll have to just consider what makes sense there. Um, but obviously that's not today, but it's another thing to consider in the future. Thank you. That's all I have. And the, the committee will give you about a month to relax and then we'll start the next project so you can you can have a breather, right? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, Don, I was gonna say we're gonna have to find something for you to do. You guys have done such a great job on this. So thank know. you. Yeah. We still have again loose ends. We'll stay engaged, but it won't be as regularly as we've been in the past. Thank you very much. Thank you, Don. Any questions from the board? Negative. Kim, you good? Cindy, nothing. All right. Next, we have Alan. For is Alan on the on the phone? Alan Tatro. Kim, no, I don't, I don't believe he joined in. He's chasing trees right now that we're all down all over town. Okay. Yeah, they're running all around town. I can take oh, this. It's, it's, it's really straightforward. So. Um, we have a vacancy in the highway department and interviews were held. Tanya and Alan interviewed um, a handful of candidates. They had one candidate that actually stood out from all the rest. Um, the person, Jacob Comer, um, the starting rate is 2071, um, pending successful background check. He can be going two weeks. I move to appoint 
Jacob Comer, the position of heavy equipment operator for the highway department at a rate of $20.71 per hour. And a step one. Yeah, okay, step one. Pending uh, successful background check. <laughs> um, second. All in favor? Park I. Tineo, I. Real I. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Consider temporary amendment to Monday through Saturday and Sunday entertainment license for DV Menden Grandview, Six Nip Up Drive. Can you guys vote this? I'm just going to abstain. Yeah. Chris, you want to you have the motion in there? I move to approve the temporary amendment to the existing uh, Monday through Saturday and Sunday entertainment license for GV Mending Grandview, Six Network Drive to include the tented area. Okay, step down and second. Kim, do you have details on this? I don't know. Basically, this is pretty straightforward. They have to have an amendment because the tent area wasn't originally included in their original application. So we've received all the maps and all of the proper forms, and it's, the application is good to go. All those in favor? Park aye. Real aye. Tineo so, abstain. Yeah. Okay. Consider signing election warrant. Move to sign the 9 1 2020 state primary election warrant. Second. All those in favor? Senior I. Burke I. Real I. I don't think there was any need for discussion on that. Uh, we have the STM election warrant. Yes. Date. Not election, but SCM one. Uh, looks like the warrant will close on October 1st, seven weeks prior to STM as per town bylaws. Um, so I move to open up the November 19, 2020 STM warrant. Second. The date is November 19th. Yeah, he said it. Okay. Um, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Nothing to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor? Tineo, aye. Park aye. Real aye. That's it. We don't have anything else except executive, so. Correct. Kim, nothing else under 48 hours? No. Okay, I move to enter into executive session under Master and Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A, under purpose two, to conduct non-union personnel contract negotiations, town administrator, and under purpose three, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the End and Mass Coalition of Police Union, AFL-CIO, Local 188. We will reconvene only to adjourn. Roll call vote is needed. Second. All in favor? Tineo, aye. Real aye. Okay, Mark, so thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Kim. There's a separate link for executive session. Um, so I'll just text me or text Dave when you want us to join the meeting. Okay. Okay. If uh, Bonnie, I didn't see the second link. So can you forward it to me, please? Uh, the second link is in the the uh, oh, okay. the thing from Laura. Yeah, it's on the motions. If you scroll down to the bottom, it's right there. I'm I forwarding see. it to you too. I see. There you go. I just sent it, Chris. Okay, thank you. I got it too. All right, thank you. Yep. Bye, everyone. You're there. Bye. Do you need it? All right, I'm hanging up. Bye. Cindy, you're muted. Do you need the link? She should have it. Okay, she's muted, so she needs help. Okay.